Good morning, and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m., bright and early, right here at Home on the Range, and thank you so much for being here this morning, folks. We have an interesting way to start the day. It's kind of a feel-good story. It looks like this guy's having a good time. I mean, he's smiling. He's Anyways, but look at this thumb St- sitting next to this guy. Check him out, man. Look at his watch. It's all lit up. It's all blue. They love the color blue. Okay, let's get on with it. Thank you guys for putting up with me. California man wins $1 million after 17-hour police interrogation. Whoa, that's a long time. Falsely accuses him of killing his father, who was alive. <laughs> oh, cops are dumb. Footage from inside Fontana Police Department showed Thomas Perez Jr. crying. Oh, he wasn't having fun. Pulling his hair out and ripping his shirt off and lying next to his dog, who officers threatened to have put down. Oh, I'm not going to like this. I was just having fun, and now I'm not. These stupid cops. Look at these idiots. Look at this guy with his girdle. All right. California man has won a lawsuit, good, against a city police department. Well, which city? Come on. A city police department, I'm guessing it's Fontana, whose officers interrogated him for 17 hours, threatened to kill his dog and pressured him to confess to murdering his own father, who was still alive. Explain that, cops. Idiots. So, Fontana, 50 miles east of Los Angeles, was ordered to pay Thomas Perez Jr. $898,000 in damages following the incident in 2018. A judge said that questioning from officers had appeared to be a form of psychological torture. Yeah, it's also a constitutional violation, most certainly. Surveillance footage of the interrogation taken from the Fontana Police Department and shared with the Independent showed Mr. Perez in extreme emotional distress. They love that. They they think they're getting somewhere when you do that. At points, he is seen screaming out loud and attempting to rip his own hair and pull his own shirt off. You know what? They did get somewhere. They got him to confess. Officers also brought his pet Labrador retriever into the room and said the dog named Margosha would need to be put down due to depression from witnessing a murder that had not actually occurred. They told him to say goodbye to the animal. Who are these cops? Let's name these cops. Come on, man. We want to know their names. Officers also brought his pet... Okay. According to court documents obtained by the Independent, Mr. Perez Jr. had called police on August 7th, 2018 about his father, 71-year-old Thomas Perez Sr., had gone out for a walk with the family dog around 10 p.m. The dog returned without Mr. Perez... without his father... Oh, man. Call on the cops. Good grief. Detective suspicious had been aroused because Mr. Perez had seemed distracted and unconcerned with his father's disappearance, the documents said. Oh, cops, are they're so smart. Wow, this guy, he's guilty. Idiots. Detectives both told Perez that his father was dead and that they had recovered his body and had evidence that he killed him. They pressured him to confess to the crime. That's a violation. That's a constitutional violation. And if it's not, if cops are allowed to just be that big of liars, then I'm just going to go out on a limb and say all cops are absolutely evil dirt bags. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know what I'm thinking. Mr. Perez insisted he didn't remember killing anyone, but detectives allegedly told him that the human mind often tries to suppress troubling memories, the record showed. Also, like these people's moms trying to repress the memory of having, birthing these scumbag cops. At one point during the interrogation, the investigators even threatened to have Margosha euthanized as a stray and brought to the, the dog into the room so he could say goodbye. I want to know the names of these detectives. Mr. Press can be seen getting down on the floor of the interrogation room and lying next to his dog. I hate these cops, all right? (laughs) Oh, that's a strong word. No, if there was a stronger word, I'd use it. Okay, your dog's now gone. Forget about it, said the dickhead in the footage after taking the animal out of the room again. According to the legal complaint, Mr. Perez was also denied access to his prescription medication that he was taking for conditions including depression, stress, asthma, and high blood pressure. Yeah, the cops want to kill you. Those dirtbag cops did, and they're just like every other cop. Ain't no cop that's watching this have any problem with this. That's why we can't stand them. That's right. You see that look in my eye. I mean it. While interrogations of Mr. Perez was ongoing, officers visited his home where they found blood stains <laughs> and used the canine dog unit, which allegedly altered them to the presence of deceased Shiva. Uh, right. What a bunch of lies. You lying assholes. Lawyers for Mr. Perez told the Independent the first 
of the alleged bloodstains were fabricated. Of course they were. According to Mr. President's lawyer, Jerry Steen Steering, his client was severely traumatized by the incident. I'm already traumatized. I want to file a complaint on these jerk-offs. Where he shortly attempted to take his own life in the interrogation room. These cops are sick. The whereabouts of Thomas Perez Sr. was later confirmed by Mr. Perez's sister who called the police station after her brother had been in the police custody for about 17 hours. No, four 17 hours. I don't know where that about came from. Their father, she said, had gone to the house of a female friend in El Monte the day of the disappearance and had traveled to Los Angeles International Airport to catch a plane to visit her in Northern California. Oh, old man doing his thing. In an order of summary judgment in the case passed on 15th, 2023, United States Judge Dolly Gee found that a reasonable juror could conclude that detectives who we won't, we don't, we want to know what their names are, but look at this, look at this idiot, look at that detective sitting there. He's a jerk. He's a jerk is what he is. All right. Anyways, reasonable conclude that detectives inflicted unconstitutional psychological torture on Perez. They certainly did. There's no legitimate government interest that would justify treating Perez in this manner while he was in medical distress since the FPD already had two warrants to search his person and property and he was already essentially in custody and unable to flee or tamper with any evidence, she wrote. Okay, independent contacted Fontana. Fontana says, ain't got nothing to say. You see that? That's what a bad apple looks like, you guys. They've always got a badge. Okay, they're scumbags. They're dirty people. I can't stand them. I usually like to try to have fun on the Bad Apple Report a little bit, but I, I absolutely hate these cops. I freaking hate them. Bad, bad apples. On to the next story. Okay, they didn't give us much information on this knucklehead, but check out his little goofy Betty Crocker hairdo. Okay, I had somebody in the comments, I think it was Sharon... The other day, ask what is a Betty Crocker hairdo? I'm always commenting on these cops. Listen, it's when these goofball cops want to try to look like a 12-year-old boy and their little swoop, and it looks like he just came right out of a damn cake box. All right? Their little, okay, I don't know if that's a good enough explanation, but it just reminds me of them being uh, the sickos that they are. All right? They can't just be a normal man. They have to try to be a little perv. Okay, so this de deputy was arrested on charge of assault with a deadly weapon. All right, and we've got no other information. That's it. That's literally it. <laughs> but look at him. And that's what a Betty Crocker hairdo is, you guys. See, they zip it off on the sides. And this guy don't really have the full Betty, but I just like to mess with him anyways. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm shallow. What, what can I say? Okay, you guys, we have an Orange County deputy who was arrested and accused of pushing his ex-wife. wonder how that made his current wife feel. A Florida deputy with the Orange County Sheriff's Office has been arrested, accused of shoving his ex-wife. According to the arrest affidavit, Patricio Gores was booked into the Volusia County Jail on charges of misdemeanor battery in Volusia County. Dang, they got all kind of bad apples down there. They got inertia down in Volusia County. Okay, he's since bonded out. He's, let's say hi to him, you guys. He's on the Bad Apple Report. Let's, let's have a look, look-see. An Orange County deputy ends up with a mugshot in Volusia County. He was arrested for shoving his ex-wife reportedly. Patricio Gorris is being charged with misdemeanor battery. He has since bonded out of jail. This happened after Gorris reportedly got frustrated with his ex-wife when she wouldn't let him get things from the garage into land. Gorris was working in the court security unit and has now been relieved of all law enforcement duties while the case is underway never stand between a man and his weed eater well here we are deep in the show and i'm still triggered by that first cop man he makes me so mad but look at tk waters he's mad too he's got to talk about another bad cop on his team this one is doing he did allegedly what they all do apparently and that's take our information our personal information they use it for their own private pleasure it's true. They pleasure themselves with our information. That's why they're so addicted to the ID. But listen, look at TK looking at me. I'm looking at you, TK. You looking at me? All right. Listen, TK is going to take over the Bad Apple Report. I think he's going to do a good job. Let's see what TK has to say. All right. So good evening. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, 
I'm here to notify the public of an arrest of a JSO police officer by our agency. Earlier today, Officer Allen Lesage was arrested on one count of offenses against computer users, which is a third degree felony. At the time of his arrest, Lesage had been employed by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for six years and seven months. His date of hire is September 30th, 2017. Lesage has resigned and he is no longer a member of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Why do they get to resign and don't get immediately fired? Why don't they get canned? This is an active criminal case and investigation, so there's limited information with which I'll be able to provide at this time. However, the following is a summation of the facts as we know them, which support uh, Lesage's arrest. On May 20th, 2024, an audit by JSO's Internal Affairs Unit revealed that Lesage used a protected Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles driver and vehicle information database for personal reasons outside of the scope of his police duties. He was pleasuring himself with that information. Internal Affairs forwarded this information to JSO's Integrity Unit, which fully investigated the criminal uh, allegation. Detectives discovered that on April 13th, 2024, Officer Lesage used the DHSMV database to run 15 tags of vehicles parked in an apartment complex. And I would be willing to bet that he was sitting there buck naked in front of his computer while he did it, you guys. He did. In which his ex-girlfriend lived. Lesage was not on duty, nor was he working in an off-duty off -duty assignment. Or I know, he was sitting in front of his computer. He probably had a, a box of Right there. Oh, I know. I don't want you guys to have to visualize it, but he was pleasuring himself. He was. That's what he was doing. More capacity when he ran those tags. Ooh. Accessing data housed within the DHSMV system for personal reasons is strictly prohibited. This is the sixth arrest of a JSO employee by this agency in 2024. Well, as I said before. When JSO employees have been arrested, no one is above the law. Our collective belief in openness and transparency and accountability outweighs any personal allegiance to JSO employees. And when a member of this agency violates the law, we're going to take action. Uh, and after he's done taking action, he's going to read this paragraph again. And then he's going to look at you guys and he's going to do this with his glasses. And he's going to keep looking around, making sure everybody believes he's sincere. And we're going to hold them accountable. And I'll take any questions that you may have at this time. We're not going to give it out right now because it's just more private. Oh, what's his name? Confidential. Oh, thank you. Um, and then, you know, how, you, you mentioned how many uh, have already been arrested in jail? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. and just All right. Six. All right. Knowing that, how does that make you feel? No, it doesn't make me feel good. How does it make him feel? It doesn't make him feel good, you guys. Listen, this is funny. I mean, you don't want to arrest anyone, right? <laughs> yes. You want to arrest the hell out of criminals. We're all about it. We don't like criminals. We want them to be arrested, especially when they're cops. But I think more importantly is to show our public that we hold our police officers. More importantly, we gaslight the crap out of you, okay? We come right out here. I'm the sheriff. I'm the big man. I'm going to read to you. I'm going to look you in the eye. Mm -hmm. How many people have been arrested? Ah, oh, six. What month is this? <laughs> Knucklehead. Accountable and corrections officers accountable when, when they do things they have no business doing, like violating the law. When they do things they have no business doing, like violating their law. Hmm. So when that happens, we're going to take action. And you said when he ran it, he went to the ex-girlfriend from the Did he do anything else with that information? Not that we know of, not at this time. Uh, what did he do with your phone? Again, he looked it up because I think he was trying to find out something about his ex-girlfriend or a person that was at the ex-girlfriend's place. <laughs> okay. And why do they always do that? for some pleasurable reason, something that pleasures them. And as always, it has been my pleasure to put together this Bad Apple Report for you this morning and every morning right here at Home on the Range. Thank you so much for watching. You have made my day like you do every day. You guys are awesome, 
and I hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow morning at 7.30.